Hi everybody, it's Miss Bree here. Um, I'm so excited to teach you today. I prepared a lesson for us to learn all about the author's purpose. Um, we've been discussing lately the three different type of, types of different um, purposes that an author may use um, when writing a story, a text, a passage. Um, and these are all ways that we're going to learn how to write today. So today, um, we're going to be, like I said, learning about the different author purposes. Um, you're going to be learning how to write using one of those. And yeah, let's get started. So the first um, type of purpose that we're going to discuss today is pers to persuade. Okay, so when an author uses um, a persuasive purpose in their text, their story, whatever they're writing, um, they're trying, they're going to try and persuade you or someone to do something um, that you might see um, in some type of a speech, an advertisement, a letter, an article. Um, those are all different examples. So for example, we have a president who is going to be um, or we have different nominees for presidents that are going to be running in November, and each of them have to try and persuade us um, to vote for them. So they're going to be using some persuasive techniques um, to make someone do or think something um, in order for them to get into office, okay? The next topic um, or purpose that we're gonna be talking about is entertain, okay? So this is when an author wants to amuse the reader. Um, this is when they want to keep you engaged in a story, um, a book. So you might see this specifically in a fiction book, um, which means that it's make-believe. Um, you can see this in a poetry book. You can see this in a joke book, okay? These are just a few different examples. So keep in mind, um, entertain is when an author uses this to entertain you, to amuse you, to keep you engaged. Um, I always use this as an example, but before bedtime, we want to think happy thoughts, right? So we might read a really happy or funny story. Um, those types of stories are going to be all about entertaining. So now the third type of um, author's purpose is going to be to inform, okay? And so this is going to teach you and I and everyone else um, reading, the reader, um, to teach new information to. So you might see um, a perp the inform purpose in books like nonfiction books, um, a textbook, um, a news article. You might hear these on the, you might hear people talking on the news, um, these are all different types of books um, or texts or passages that are going to be using the information technique. So a nonfiction book is a book where it's the opposite of fiction. So fiction is going to be all about fairy tales, make-believe. Nonfiction is going to be more so about facts and true information. So we read these kinds of books to get educated, to learn new things, to gain information and knowledge. And that is the third type of purpose that an author may use when writing a text or a book. So here's an example of persuading. So this is when the author wants to try and convince the reader of something to agree with him or her, okay? So I'm going to model a persuasive example. And it says, my grandma should win Orange County's best pie contest. Her pie is the best pie in the world. Hint, here is where... Um, we have someone who's writing about their grandma and they're trying to convince us that their grandma's pie is the best pie in the world. So they're saying that it's the best pie in the world. Okay, they're going to give some examples and it says she makes it from scratch with fresh cherries. Everyone who gets a taste of grandma's cherry pie agrees that there is nothing else on earth like it. Okay, so here they're saying that it is the best pie ever. They're trying to convince us that it is the best pie because they use fresh cherries that are made from scratch. Um, it says, she has entered the contest for the past 10 years, has never yet won. My grandma is most deserving of the war this year, and I know she would be most honored to win. Okay, so we addressed some different persuasive techniques that they used in this um, text and they're trying to tell us that 
because the grandma uses cherries made from scratch, it must be the best cherry pie. Um, she's been in this competition for 10 years. Um, she hasn't won, but they're trying to persuade us so we maybe can vote for her. So the next topic is going to be entertain. And this is when the author writes something for a reader just to enjoy. Um, so let's read. It says, Julia and Jeff dropped their backpacks by the door. Like always, the twins were ready for a snack after their long day at school. They spotted the last piece of pumpkin pie at the same time. They made, dash, they made a dash for it. Crashing into each other in the counter, Jeff snatched the glass dish up first, but didn't have a good grasp on it. When Juliet made a swipe for it, splat! Juliet, look what you did, Jeff cried. So here we have to a, a lot of different vocab words used, right? So we have splat and look what you did. There's so much excitement going on. The twins are ready for a snack, but it looks like Juliet um, made a swipe for the dish that Jeff was holding and it just went everywhere. So we just have a little passage, but it sounds like an exciting story. Maybe we can continue reading it another time. So now we have our last type of author's purpose, and this is inform, okay? So this is when the author gives true factual information about a topic. So I'm gonna model reading an informational passage, and it says the first pies made in the 12th century were quite different than the pies we eat today. So now they're telling us, okay, so back then, pies were made a little bit differently than how they are today. So we're going to maybe hear some facts about what's different then and now. So those early pies appeared in England and were made mainly of crust with a meat filling. Oh, that is so interesting. In fact, the pies often contained fowl and the bird's legs were left intact to hang over the sides of the dish to be used as Candles. That is so interesting and that sounds so crazy. So now it says fruit pies are believed to have been created about 400 years later in the 16th century. So here we're learning about two different types of pies, right? So back then they used to make pies one way where they filled it with meat and they still um, kept the bird's legs attached and it had a purpose, right? It was to carry the sides of the dish um, to be used as handles. But today I don't think that we all make pies like this. There might be some areas in the world that still make pie like this, but about 400 years later, um, we implemented fruit pies. And those are the pies that most of us are familiar with. So it could be like the grandma's cherry pie in the beginning of our story. Um, could be strawberry pies. So in this given text, we just learned about whole new information about um, the difference between pies back in the day and pies today. So now I would like for you to go ahead and pause this video, gather two pieces of paper and a pencil. When you're ready, unpause the video and come back and join us and we'll get started on the highlight of our lesson. So together we are going to create a persuasive speech. So just like the first passage that we read, we're going to, uh, that was all about persuading us to believe that grandma's pie was the best cherry pie in the world because she used fresh cherries made from scratch. Um, we are going to create a persuasive speech together. The topic is going to be staying safe with sunscreen. So the first thing that I would like you to do on your paper is I would like for you to write at the very top here, staying safe with sunscreen, okay? I'm going to be modeling this on both my laptop and on paper for you to see. So just like you see on the right side, it says in bolded letters, staying safe with sunscreen, okay? So that is what you are going to write on your paper because this is going to be the topic, the title of our passage 
or persuasive speech that we're going to be writing together. So it says staying safe with sunscreen. Go ahead and take a minute to copy that down. So before we write anything, we want to always brainstorm our ideas, okay? I can think of a million different topics that have to do with why we should wear sunscreen, and I'm, I'm sure you can too, but to stay organized, I would like for us to create a brainstorming tree, okay? So we're going to think of five different ideas together. So on your paper, you can go ahead and draw a tree just like this. It does not have to be perfect. And in the tree, we're going to write five different ideas. So I'm going to be modeling it on my laptop, but feel free to go ahead and write your ideas on your paper. So let's go ahead and think of some ideas about why it's so important to wear sunscreen. So I believe that it is so important to wear sunscreen specifically because um, if you don't wear sunscreen, it can really harm your skin. And when we harm our skin, there's a thing called cancer, which is when icky things get into our body and really can affect us and have really long-term effects that are not good for our body. Um, and in, with skin cancer, we can develop um, little almost looks like a blister maybe on your skin or a scab. Um, it, it looks all different and um, that it's not good for your skin. Some people can get surgery and get it taken out. And so that is one reason why we should wear sunscreen. So for idea number one, at the very top of my tree, I have written idea number one here. I'm going to write no sunscreen can cause skin cancer, okay? For idea number two over here to the left, I'm gonna highlight that in a different color. We can use pink. So over here on the left, we have idea number two. Another thing that sunscreen, um, is very harming for our skin is our head, okay? Our head is a very sensitive part of our body and we wanna take very good care of it. Um, some of us might get more sunburnt than others on our head, um, but it can burn our scalp, which, which can cause just some itchy, um, scratchy pain on our head. So we can say, um, no sunscreen. So we can say, pain, no sunscreen can cause pain on our head. All right, let's move on to idea number three. I'll highlight this one in yellow so you can see where I am. We'll do it in a little bit darker of a yellow color here. So idea number three. So another reason why it is harmful to not wear, or that it's, yeah, that it's harmful to not wear sunscreen um, is bright sun can hurt your eyes, okay? So our eyes are another very sensitive part of our body, okay? So we use our eyes to see everything. It is so important that we take care of our eyes. So we can say no sunscreen and hurt our eyes. Okay, so we have two more ideas here. We're gonna think of another idea. I'm gonna put this color in orange so you can see the bottom left corner. So another reason why we should wear sunscreen is because, uh, well, we can say actually, this is um, a good idea. We can say wear sunscreen with high SPF, okay? So the SPF is going to be what helps protect your body. So when you see the big bold of letters on a bottle SPF, and then it's going to have a number like 30, 40, 50, that's going to tell you how long that the sunscreen is going to stay on your body um, and how powerful it is going to protect your body. So you always want to buy a sunscreen that has high SPF in it. 
Another idea we can say here, I'll change the color, we can say in purple, we can say that no sunscreen equals burnt skin, okay? So no sunscreen equals burnt skin. And we know from all of our different ideas here that we have listed that sunscreen um, can cause skin cancer. And uh, if your skin gets burnt, that's what can turn into skin cancer and nobody wants to experience that. Okay, so I'll make that bigger for us. So going over ideas here, idea number one says no sunscreen, none, no sunscreen can cause skin cancer. Our second idea in pink says no sunscreen can cause pain on our head. Idea number three says no sunscreen can, call, can hurt our eyes. Uh, that actually does not make sense. We're gonna actually put, wear glasses. Wear sunglasses to protect our eyes. Sometimes we need to read things out loud um, because we're thinking of so many ideas that just don't sound too good, right? That are not right. Okay, so wear sun, sunglasses to protect our eyes. Um, wear, wear sunscreen with high SPF, right? And then no sunscreen equals burnt skin, okay? So here's all our ideas. Um, you should have these written on your tree just like mine here on the computer. So you should have your different ideas written. So you could have idea number one, number two, okay, just like this, and then write your ideas right here. All right, let's get started on writing our super fun persuasive speech. So go ahead and take your other piece of paper and you're gonna get ready and write your speech, okay? So we're gonna put all of our ideas from before. So if you have your brainstorming tree, you're going to use this tree to write um, your ideas in complete sentences, okay? That's why we did it on two separate pieces of paper. I'm going to be modeling this along with you just right here on the screen so it's easier for you to copy on your paper. Um, but however, I would like for you to try writing complete sentences on your own using all of those ideas that we brainstormed together. Um, so our first idea, we can say staying safe with sunscreen. Okay, this is our title of our persuasive speech. So we can start this sentence off by saying, it is important to wear sunscreen because our skin can burn easily. Okay, so we use idea um, number five that was on our tree before. The other idea that we said was to wear sunscreen with high F SPF. So we can say wear sunscreen with high SPF to protect your skin longer, right? So we talked about the SPF and then the number that's going to be next to it is going to tell us about how long the sunscreen is going to stay on our skin for. So we can say wear sunscreen with high SPF to protect your skin longer. We can also say where it is important to wear sunglasses in the sun to protect our eyes. Okay, so we said um, it is important to wear sunscreen because our skin can burn easily. Wear sunscreen with high SPF to protect your skin longer. It is important to wear sunglasses in the sun to protect our eyes. We can say it is also important to wear a, we talked about our head getting burnt and the solution to wearing uh, or for protecting our head from getting burnt, the solution to that was to wear a hat. So we can say it is also important to wear a hat to protect our head from getting burnt. 
Okay. The last idea that we had stated was, let's go back and see. We said no sunscreen can cause cancer. Okay. So we can say, I hope you will wear sunscreen so you will not get in cancer. So now let's read this all together. So we said, it is important to wear sunscreen because our skin can burn easily. Wear sunscreen with high SPF to protect your skin longer. It is important to wear sunglasses in the sun to protect our eyes. It is also important to wear a hat to protect our head from getting burnt. I hope you will wear sunscreen so you will not get skin cancer. So um, by writing this persuasive speech, I hope that we persuaded both you, it persuaded me for sure, and I hope you share this with somebody close to you so that you can persuade them to wear sunscreen, okay? So wrapping up, um, what type of text did we write? We, there was three different types of author's purposes, okay? So there was inform, persuade, and um, entertain. Which three of those author purposes did we use? Think of that for a second. We used persuade, right? We wanted to make someone believe that it was very important to wear sunscreen. Why do we want others to be aware of sunscreen? Does it protect our skin or does it not protect our skin, right? So think about that. It does protect our skin, right? Our sun produces a lot of UV sun rays that can sometimes be harmful for our skin. Um, so we wanna wear sunscreen to protect that. And are we trying to persuade or entertain our readers about the importance of wearing sunscreen? Okay, so we kind of answered this question with number one. We decided that we wrote a persuasive um, text. So uh, we are trying to persuade our readers about the importance of wearing sunscreen. So now if you have some free time at home, I really encourage you to create your own personal persuasive persuasive speech about something that you feel is important. So I have some ideas listed below. Um, you can write all about the importance of recycling because that is very important and that is something that if you do some research, you can maybe persuade those around you to recycle the right way. Um, you can write about the importance of washing your hands. Right now there's a sickness going around, right? COVID, um, so it's very important to wash your hands not touch your face. Um, and the other um, example that I have is why you should wear bug spray, right? So maybe when you're outside, if you live somewhere where there's lots of mosquitoes, you might want to put some bug spray on. So those are all topics that I have listed for you um, to research on your own. I hope you had so much fun teaching this lesson. I know I had such a blast. Um, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for participating and I'll see you next time.